To understand the relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia, you first need to know how Saudi Arabia became a country. Exactly 100 years ago is a good place to begin a brief analysis of this region, for it was in 1916 that the British and French, along with Russian backing, signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement during World War I. This agreement anticipated the collapse and therefore it secretly divided up the Middle East in order to design a region post-Ottoman Empire. In 1917, the year following the agreement, the Zionists had gained sufficient influence and control over the British government to get it to issue the Balfour Declaration which promised Jews a homeland in Palestine. Even though the population of Palestine was at the time 85% Arab and only 7% Jewish, the defeat of the Ottoman Empire by British imperialism in World War I left three distinct authorities in the Arabian Peninsula. In the west, the Sharif of Hijaz, in the north, Ibn Rashid of Hayl, and in the east, Amir bin Saud of Najd with his religiously fanatical followers, the Wahhabis. Britain got the most help from the Sharif of Hijaz, who led the Arab revolt against the Ottomans and helped the British defeat them. In return for his support, the British had agreed and promised him the establishment of a single Arabian country from Gaza to the Persian Gulf. After the war, however, Britain did not keep its promises. Instead, it drew up the Sykes-Picot Agreement and issued the Balfour Declaration. The Sharif was discontent with this betrayal and told the British that he would never sell out Palestine to the Empire's Balfour Declaration. He would never allow the establishment of a Zionist state in Palestine or accept the new random borders drawn across Arabia by British and French imperialists. At this point, T.E. Lawrence, famously known as Lawrence of Arabia, was dispatched to bribe the Sharif and buy his support. When this didn't work, T.E. Lawrence turned to threats, which were also echoed by the colonial secretary Winston Churchill. Both men threatened to unleash Ibn Saud and his ferocious Wahhabis on them, whom they were already arming and funding for the sake of countering the threat of Ibn Rashid of Hale, who also stubbornly opposed the establishment of a Zionist state in the region. In September of 1921, Hale was attacked by Ibn Saud and they could not resist the vicious onslaught. officially surrendered in November of 1921. Hale had dissolved into a colony of the Sultanate of Najd. By March 1924, the British realized that Sharif Hussein would not back down, so they unleashed Ibn Saud and his armies on the Hijazi territory as well. Within weeks, the forces of Ibn Saud and his Wahhabi followers began to administer what the British Foreign Secretary Lord Curzon called the final kick to Sharif Hussein and ruthlessly attacked Hijazi territory. By September 1924, Ibn Saud had overrun Ta'if, the summer capital of the Sharif. In mid-October 1924, Ibn Saud captured Mecca, the holiest place in Islam. After losing Mecca, the Sharif had to flee and lose his entire territory to Ibn Saud, ancestor of the current Saudi lineage. In January 1925, Ibn Saud had begun his siege of Jeddah and the city finally surrendered in December 1925, bringing an end to over 1,000 years of caliphate rule which had begun after the demise of Prophet Muhammad. In February 1926, the new unified Wahhabi state was rebranded by the empire in 1932 as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia.
As you can see right from the start, the man who as a matter of principle opposed a Zionist state in Palestine was kicked out of his own land. Yet the man who was willing to allow a Zionist state to be created was paid off handsomely and given an entire new country to exploit and dominate. Even today, any nation that is opposed to the legitimacy of the Zionist entity are being destroyed one by one. While the nations that support the existence of the Zionist entity like Saudi Arabia are being compensated handsomely for their subservience. Are there any similarities between the Wahhabi and Zionist ideologies who seem to be completely opposite but both the creations of the British Empire? Stay tuned to find out.